Amen. I'd like to say hello to everybody once again. I'd like to welcome you to Restoration Christian Fellowship Church Wednesday night Bible study, uh, May 29th, 2024. Uh, I bring you greetings on behalf of our senior pastor, Emma Jane Ingram, the Restoration Christian Fellowship Church family. I'm Elder, Elder Kenneth Jones. We thank you for joining our broadcast on tonight as we continuing uh, to study in, uh, of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12. Uh, tonight, we're going to be on point three, spiritual warfare. Uh, should be third, there is the warfare of the Christian soldier is where we're going to start at on tonight. Point three. Amen. And uh, we're going to go from there. Amen. Um, I hate to do this in the middle of, of the opening. Uh, Deacon Kevin, Deacon Frank was just calling me. Uh, I'm not sure if you can text him or give him a call and make sure he's okay. Because usually he doesn't do anything like that. So uh, once again, I thank God for you joining. Uh, we want to open up with a Psalms on today. Uh, I would like to start with Psalms 100, 105 on tonight. Uh, we just ready to just give God all the glory, all the praise, all the honor on tonight. Let me just make sure our Facebook audience is good here. There we go. Amen. So we can go ahead and get started. Uh, Psalms 105, reading from the New Living Translation reads, I'm reading verses one through three. Uh, actually, I'm going to read four because four is good as well. Uh, Psalms 105, it says, give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Sing to him. Yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Exalt his holy name. Rejoice, you who worship the Lord. Search for the Lord and for his strength. Continually seek him. Amen. Give thanks. Amen. Once again, to the Lord. That's the scripture I want to zero in on tonight. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world, let the whole world, everybody know what he has done. Amen. He is a glorious God. He's a mighty God. And he has done great things in the earth. And he has done great things for each and every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. And we want to also sing to him. Yes, sing to him his praises. Amen. Because his praises, he deserves all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. He's worthy of all the praise and the glory. Amen. At this time, I'm going to open up in prayer as we welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit into our class on tonight. And we just, just want him to just be here with us. Lord, we come before you tonight first asking for forgiveness for anything we may have done outside of your will. We thank you for forgiving us and placing us in right standing with our Father God. God, we welcome your presence into this class on tonight. The word says where two or three are gathered in your name, there you will be in the midst. So God, we thank you that we have more than three people on the call on tonight. So we welcome your presence, oh God. We welcome your 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 um, energetic, oh God, uh, spirit of uh, praise, of worship, oh God, of honor. Oh, glory, oh God, we just welcome your presence into this class. And God, we pray that you word my mouth as I decrease, that you may increase, oh God. All those who will give answers to questions and give thoughts on tonight, God, we ask you to word their mouths as well. And just speak to each, speak through each and every one of us on tonight. Uh, have your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we once again lift up our senior pastor to you, Emma Jane Ingram. We continue to thank you for her encouragement, her wisdom, oh God, her strength, oh God, her, her energy, oh God. God, we just thank you for renewing, oh God, her joy, renewing her passion to serve you, oh God. Renew her wisdom to serve you and to serve us, uh, your people, God. God, we thank you for her, oh God. We just thank you once again for the, the message she brought on Sunday, oh God, oh God, um, uh, we we just thank you because um, she's just an awesome uh, teacher of your word and she just brings it um, to us in a, um, a special way. So we thank you for her teaching. We thank you for the anointing to preach. We thank you for the anointing to lay hands and to deliver those that are sick. We just thank you for our pastor on tonight. We thank you for the members of Restoration, all the members, uh, elders, deacons, ministers, everyone in their rightful place, lay members. We thank you for them as well. We also thank you for the friends of Restoration. God, we ask you to watch over our families, watch over our children. Oh God, watch over our homes, oh God. God, we thank you, oh God, for rebuking the devourer on our jobs. And just thank you for even opening doors for those who need doors open on tonight, oh God. Those who, God, have given up on, on life, oh God, because they may not um had the job or had the opportunities that others have had, oh God. We pray for them on tonight, oh God. And we just thank you 
for opening doors for them in the name of Jesus Christ. We also lift up Deacon Kevin's son, Kevin Jr. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you touch his body, oh God. Let your healing virtues flow right now through his body, oh God. Let your blood, oh God, your DNA, your healing DNA flow right now in his body, oh God. God, the doctors, oh God, give them the intelligence and the knowledge necessary to help uh, uh, Deacon Kevin's son, Kevin, oh God. God, we thank you, oh God, for um, an outstanding report Oh God. God, we thank you, oh God, for uh, fixing that lung right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We plead the blood of Jesus over him right now. Oh God, all those that are sick and shut in on tonight, we pray for them and we speak miracles right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Miracles, oh God. God, perform, oh God, great things right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, just as we said in your word today, your greatness, oh God, who you are in our lives, oh God. You, you're such a great God. And, and we place uh, Kevin Jr. in your hands. We place, place all those others that are sick, all those that are battling diabetes, oh God, cancer, mental problems, oh God, uh, dementia, oh God, whatever it may be, we lift them up to you on tonight and we speak healing over them in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we thank you, oh God. We also pray for our nation. Oh God, I, I, I just, uh, just, just, just feel for our nation, oh God. God, I feel as though, oh God, we're becoming a joke around the world, oh God. God, we once was a strong, mighty power, oh God. And, and now it just seems like a bunch of division. He say, she say, fighting, oh God. God, so we just lift up our nation to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We know the devil is at work, oh God, trying to destroy this nation because this nation supports Israel and has supported it for many, many years. So we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, over Jerusalem, oh God. You told us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, God. We pray for peace in that land right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And all these uh, people in our country, oh God, that's coming against, oh God, Israel, oh God, we bind that evil spirit right now, oh God. We release, we ask you to release knowledge, oh God, in our world right now, oh God. Let them find, oh God, the material, oh God. Let them find a teacher, someone with wisdom and knowledge to explain to them what's going on over in that country, oh God. God, and how I, I even here in our nation, our government, oh God, is misleading people, oh God. So we pray right now for that nation and all the other nations, you, you praying, oh God, we pray, oh God, for Haiti, oh God. We lift up the family of those missionaries that lost their lives in Haiti, oh God, um, on the mission field, God. Glory to God. We pray for them, oh God. They didn't leave, but they stayed there to serve your people, oh God. Oh, God, we just pray for them. We pray for their families, their children that are left behind. We just pray for your peace, your comfort for that family in Haiti in the name of Jesus Christ that lost their lives on the mission field. And we pray for missionaries all over this world that, that we don't talk about much, but they're in, in some of the darkest places, oh God, serving you. We lift them up to you and we ask you to encourage their hearts, oh God. Keep funding available, oh God, for them to be in those places, oh God. Provide shelter, food, protection, oh God, for them. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, we just thank you uh, for what you're going to do through our Bible study on tonight as we continue our second part of the, um, of the armor of God. We just thank you for uh, the class. We thank you for those that are on. We thank you for those who will view this uh, class in the future, that they will uh, get uh, glory and that they will benefit from the class. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. So we just thank God. For his prayer on tonight, as stated, we're in uh, Ephesians chapter 6 um, on tonight. Uh, I'm going to read verses 10 through 12. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I just love how the New Living Translation talks and explains the, uh, the whole armor of God. Um, so I'm reading verses 10 through 12 from the New Living Translation to get us started. A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you be, will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen. And that's so important of the unseen world against mighty powers in a dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Amen. And we want to uh, next I'm going to. um show you a quick video uh to 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 get us started 
and hopefully uh where is it at Amen. And this is uh, uh, Tony Evans' son, I mean, daughter, uh, talking about the uh, we wrestle not against uh, uh, blood, flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. But I love to, to start this off on tonight. And I think I'm going to have to stop sharing and reshare because I didn't hit uh, play music. Forgive me for that. Share sound. There we go. All right, I'm going to play this now. Did everyone see that? There is always something you can't see influencing what you can. And if you spend all of your time, your energy, your effort trying to hit at what you see popping up in your life, you're going to be so frustrated and, by the way, exhausted. Because as soon as you take care of one thing, another one is coming back. Unless you do what the Apostle Paul says, pull back the curtain and let the enemy know we got our eyes on you. And we're going to use some weapons that actually work back there behind the curtain. Y'all, I wish I had learned this when I was 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, that that person, that physical problem isn't really where you need to invest your energy, pull back the curtain, use the weapons that actually have power. There is always something you... Amen. And I wanted to start that way because... Um, we, I'm not sure. All my life, I've heard that we should. We are soldiers in the army of the Lord. Uh, we are fighting a mighty battle. Amen. And then last couple of weeks, we talked about how, Amen. If if what good is the armor or being a soldier in the army or a soldier for God's army, and you don't use the arsenal that God has provided for you, if you don't have the heart to fight, Amen. Um, it's so important. Um, these next few verses that we're going to be studying. Because now we're going to understand who we're fighting against. Amen. Um, many times we think we're fighting against that person that's standing right in front of us. Amen. Or that that organization, that corporation or whatever it may be. But actually we're fighting, amen, principalities, which we're going to learn about. Uh, 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 spirits, amen. The enemy, amen, that's hell bent on destroying our lives. Amen. So it's very, very important that we, we take to heart. Well, we're going to be studying in the next few weeks because we're going to need every part of the armor of God that we're going to talk about to be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. Amen. And be able to take the fight to him. Amen. And 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 I love that clip because she's, she's made a good point. She says, you know, now that she understands the weapons, amen, that she's able to fight and combat the enemy with, that she was going to start to use them. And that's what we have to do. Amen. As believers, we have to start using the the weapons that God has given us so so graciously. Amen. He could have left us alone. We know we have the presence of the Holy Spirit active and in our lives working. Amen. But also he's given us some tools to help us fight and come back to enemy. And we're going to learn about the helmet, the belt, the sword. Amen. The shield. Amen. The belt of truth. Amen. The feet, the shoes. We're going to learn all about those things and how each one of those um uh, 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 parts of the armor are important to the believer's life. And Paul was stressing to the Ephesians, amen, how important this was and they that they had to understand it, amen, to, to be able to combat the enemy and that let the enemy just um, run all over them, amen. And it's so easy for us to, you know, get caught up in our day-to-day -day lives, amen, that we forget, amen, to, to wear that armor, to put on the helmet of salvation, to guard the enemy from getting into our minds. I was sharing with my wife just recently how the enemy has just been trying to attack my mind, amen, and we have to plead the blood of Jesus, amen. We have to um, uh, uh, put that helmet on, amen, and, and let truth speak to us and not evil and, and deception, amen. So, so my first question to the class on tonight to get us started um, after reading verses 10 through 12, amen, what is the significance of Ephesians 6, 10, and 12 um, in understanding spiritual warfare? What is the significance of Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 12, 
and understanding spiritual warfare before we get into the lesson on tonight. Anyone would like to share what their uh, initial thoughts are about spiritual warfare as we uh, start the class on tonight? Yes, Sister Ricky. Well, initially, um, just thinking I was taught and remember being taught is that you first have to know who your enemy is mm -hmm. and, and what they're using to fight. You can't yeah. go to a, a a gun battle with a water gun, you know, yes. kind of way. And you definitely need to be able to identify who the enemy actually is because we don't want to be fighting the wrong person. Let's say brother against brother or sister or your spouse or your children when it actually is the enemy is that who yes. we need, who we're fighting. Amen. That's a very good point that we know who we're fighting against. Amen. And that's what we're talking about, that we're not fighting flesh. Amen. We're not fighting that person directly in front of you, but we're fighting spirits. Amen. We're fighting principalities and powers. Amen. That's who we're actually fighting. And that's a good point that we must know and understand who that um, that enemy is. Amen. Uh, we like to welcome Pastor uh, Imogen Ingram to the class one tonight. We thank you, Pastor, for joining uh, Deacon Kevin, did you, was somebody else hand up? Uh, I wasn't up, but um, uh -huh. I do want to say, um, as Sister Ricky was, was speaking, uh, the word came to me is while you're exactly what uh, Sister Ricky said, but it also gives you the confidence. Um, when you have the confidence because you know what you're dealing with, you know the fight that you're going to fight, you know what you need to do, then you have the confidence. When you don't know um, what you're doing, you, you're you just going to run away because yeah. you haven't been built. You haven't, uh, um, your heart hasn't been built up. It was the reason why um, uh, David was able to fight Goliath. He had already went through the battle of the, of the lion and the bear and the wolves. Yes. Um, so he already had the confidence um, in the Lord um, because the Lord had already given him that when he fought off the other animals and he knew what to do. He knew that Christ was winning when he went into the battle. So he had the, the confidence that the other men, Saul and the other soldiers did not have the confidence. They were just standing there and they let a boy go before them you know, uh, to fight a battle that they no longer had the confidence to fight because they didn't, they weren't walking by the Lord. They were walking in their own confidence. And, and when their confidence fell, they had no other way to go. But yeah. uh, 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 David couldn't fail because his strength was in the Lord. And as, like I said, when Sister Ricky was speaking, that word confidence came to me because once you had the word of God, you know how to fight the enemy. You know how to go out about your day. Um, even when I was driving down uh, Richmond, me and my wife, the first thing we do is we pray. We don't just drive because we, yeah. we know there's going to be accidents along the way. Then we have the confidence to drive down and come back only because we know where our strength lies. Not in us, but in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing. And uh, two good uh points and uh, answers uh, to the question on today uh, to get us started, because that's that's it, you know, knowing our enemy, amen, knowing how to combat him, amen, and having the confidence, amen, to, to take the fight to him uh, and not just sit back and let him beat on us, amen. But at times, amen, um, uh, we have to take the fight to the enemy and not be afraid to take the fight to the enemy, amen. So uh, that's a good way to get started on tonight. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get into the lesson as stated uh, last week at the closing. Uh, Pastor and her closing remarks was uh, referencing, amen, how we're uh, uh, not fighting, amen, flesh, but we're fighting enemies, amen, uh, uh, fighting rulers and authorities, amen, of the unseen world, amen, and how that video that I showed, how the, the uh, young lady was explaining, amen, how, amen, she wished she um, had got the scriptures, they probably did get the scriptures. I'm sure she got the scriptures when she was younger, just by knowing who her father was, amen, but didn't activate them. But as she got older, 
Now she has the confidence and the boldness to apply the scriptures to her life and now um, go after the enemy. So as we start tonight on point three, spiritual warfare, amen, on your packet, point three, spiritual warfare. Uh, uh, third, there is the warfare of the Christian soldier, amen. There is the warfare of this Christian soldier. The, war the warfare is not human or physical, but spiritual, amen. Uh, I have that highlighted in my notes, amen. The warfare is not human or physical, but spiritual, amen. Uh, Woos, amen, has a descriptive picture of the believer's great spiritual struggle. It reads, in the world wrestle, amen, T-A-L-E, Paul uses a Greek athletic term. Thayer defines as follows, a contest between two in which endeavors to throw the other and which is decided when the victor is able to press and hold down his prostate antagonist, namely hold him down with his hand on his neck. When we consider that the loser in a Greek wrestling contest had his eyes gouged out with resulting blindness for the rest of their days, we can form some conception of the Ephesian Greek reaction to Paul's illustration. The Christian's the Christian's wrestling against the powers of darkness is no less uh, desperate and faithful. Amen. So we see here in the uh, as we even get started. Amen. In this, we're, we're we're wrestling. Amen. We're in a wrestling match against the enemy. Amen. And the end result in in this particular uh, in the Greek athletic games were that the loser would have their eyes gouged out and they would be blinded for the rest of their lives, amen? And it is the same way with us as believers, we're going to learn tonight, where the enemy wants to, to have us walk around in spiritual darkness, amen, where he wants to zap and uh, uh, overthrow us and put us down and hold us down to where we give up, amen, and, and, and we throw in the towel and, and let his ways or let his, his strategies against us win out. But no, we must wrestle, we must learn to fight, and we're going to learn about that on tonight. The point to see is that the believer's struggle, once again, is not against flesh and blood. His foes are not human or physical. They are spiritual, spiritual forces that possess unbelievable power. Note, amen, exactly what is said. The believer fights, amen. Every believer fights against principalities, against power, against the rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness. This reveals some very clear things to us. First, the forces of evil are powerful forces. The thrust of this verse is to stress the enormous power of evil forces which stand against the believer. The forces, point two, the forces of evil are numerous, amen? Principalities, powers, rulers, all convey the idea of a large number of evil forces who are struggling against the believer. Point three, the forces are apparently organized into a government um, or a hierarchy of evil. Again, principalities, powers, and rulers of this world in high places all point toward a ranking of spiritual forces with enormous authority position, and rule. Point D, or four, the forces of evil are the rulers of the darkness of this world. Darkness in the Bible means the ignorance of the truth and reality of the real nature and purpose of things. For example, what is the source of man and his, and his world? Where have man and his world come from? What is the purpose of man and his world? Why are man and his world existing? What is the end of man in his world? Is there even a place to go after this life? Another world, another life. Darkness is not knowing these things. It is being ignorant to them, of them. Uh, light is knowing God and his son, Jesus Christ, that God and Christ stand at the, as the source and purpose and end of man and his world. Light is knowing the truth, glory to God, in reality of man and his world. 
that God created all for himself and that he loves and saves all to live with him eternally. If all we only if if all will only believe and trust him, amen, the forces of evil are the rulers of darkness, the rulers who blind the minds of men lest they believe the glorious gospel of eternal salvation. The forces of evil are spiritual forces of wickedness. They seek once again to receive the loyalty and devotion that is due God. Therefore, they are after the spirit of man, that part of man, that part of man that is destined to worship and serve God and exist forever. If they can capture the spirit of man, they have him eternally. His life and presence forever and ever. Therefore, they do all they can do. They Therefore, they do all they can to lead man's spirit into wickedness. They are the spiritual forces of wickedness. Amen. So for thought, before we uh, seek any thoughts and questions, for thought, some persons have always scoffed at the idea of personal uh, of a personal devil or demons who actually exist in a so-called spiritual world. They feel that they are too educated, too intelligent to believe such nonsense. They proclaim that, that such ideas are outdated and belong to the dark ages of man's ignorance and superstitions. But note a significant fact. Man is ever so conscious of what he terms, what he terms subconscious horrors that affect both his mind and body, unseen and uncontrollable forces that greatly affect us or her behavior. And these are some of the things we talked about the last few weeks, amen. Unregulated behavior that he cannot control even when he knows better and wills to do differently. Cosmic forces that affect and determine his behavior. Blind fate that controls his life like a puppet. Blind fate that controls his life like a puppet. F.F. Bruce uh, words, words it very well. It says, Satan and his demonic forces rank among the highest angel, princes, and hierarchy of the heavenly places, yet all of them owe their existence to Christ through whom they were created. Colossians 1.16. And it reads, For by him... For all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whereby they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And who is accordingly uh, the head of all, princip all principalities and powers. Colossians 2 and 10 tells us, tells us and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all, all principality and power. But some, at least of the principalities and powers, have embarked upon rebellion against God and not only seek to force men to uh, pay them the worship that is due to him, but launched an assault upon the crucified Christ at a time when they thought they had him at their mercy. But he, far from suffering their assault without resistance, grappled with them and overcame them, stripping them of their armor and driving them uh, before him in his triumphal procession. Uh, procession. Colossians 2.15 says, he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame, glory to God, by triumphing over them and him. Thus, the hostile powers of evil which Christians must encounter are already vanished powers, but it is only through faith, amen, with the victorious Christ that Christians can make his triumph heirs, amen. Glory to God. And then um, think for a moment and be honest. Think of all the wickedness and evil and wrongdoing and selfishness in the world, all the division, prejudice, favoritism, anger, hate, pride, War, killing, arguing, selfishness, immorality, arrogance, stealing, lying, cursing, bitterness. Amen. 
The list could go on and on. Ad infinitum, and that the word ad infinitum meant infinitum. It means a, it's a Latin phrase meaning without end or limit. The evil of man consumes the news reports every day. Just think about it. Do we know better? Do do not enough of us know better enough of us that we could change things? Yes, we do. Why then do we not change the world? This passage tells us why. Because we are wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers, against, amen, uh, rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, according to Ephesians 6, 12. Amen. God, because he is God, has to tell us the truth. He cannot do otherwise. Therefore, God reveals to us that is clearly evident as any other single fact on earth. There is an evil force that has access to the spirit of man and can influence and enslave man to do evil. He is called Satan, who rules over the darkness and spiritual wickedness of this world. The only hope for the believer is to put on the whole armor of God. Amen. And before we go into the scriptures, I'm going to open up the floor and get anyone's thoughts so far on, on what we talked about in this last few paragraphs, how the enemy, amen, is, is after us. Amen. He knows he's a de defeated foe and all he wants, amen, to, for us to worship him. Amen. But we are going to worship God. And because God, as we read in the very first scripture tonight, he's worthy of all the glory, all the honor. He created all things. And we should give him, amen, all the thankfulness and all the praise for what he has done for us. And he didn't leave us, amen, uh, without any armor. He didn't leave us without any protection. Uh, we all know that we have the power of the Holy Spirit that resides within us to help us, amen, to withstand the attacks of the enemy when we put on his armor that we're going to be talking about in the next few weeks. But it's such a glorious thing to understand who we are fighting, amen. That is a spirit world, amen, that, that we're fighting against, amen. And if you will, um, I, I believe, you know, I know his pastor who talks about a portal, amen, and, and in the computer uh, business that I'm in, amen, a portal is what we use. Uh, people have a password to be able to get to a domain or get to a website, get to an email, get to uh, databases and all these different things. It's a portal. But the only way that that, that person or, in, or company can get to that information is if a portal was open, amen. So we have to be careful, amen, that we don't open the portal to darkness, amen, because once we open that portal to darkness, amen, these, we're fighting against powers that are uh, uh, that have strategies that know, amen, how to come at us, know our weaknesses, know our ups, knows our downs. So they not just come in at us, amen, to, 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 to play petty cake, as they will say, or to give us a high five, amen. They coming to destroy us as they are destroyed, amen. And they want to zap out, amen, the worship that we're going to give to God and to, 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 to zap out eternal life that we have because of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So the fight is on, saints, and we must, amen, have the armor of God in, um, in effect in our lives to be able to withstand the enemy. Amen. Because that's what we are. We are in a fight. If you look at our world, uh, those few things that I talked about, amen, darkness, selfishness, amen, all deceitfulness, all those things exist today. Why? Because of the evil, amen, and the principalities that are speaking things um, into people, minds and hearts uh, to, to do evil things. Um, there are many times that I've watched uh, 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 court proceedings and different times the person may say, I didn't know what I was doing, amen, and then I woke up, and after I woke up, I had stabbed or shot or killed or uh, went in a fight or a bit of rage because the enemy had come in and took full control over that that man or that woman and caused them to do some deceitful things. So the armor of God is important. So right now, I'm going to take a pause and I'm going to open up the floor. Any thoughts on what we have studied so far? Uh, yes, love. Oh, I think Pastor. I'm sorry, Pastor. I didn't see that you had me unmuted. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, the one thing we know is that 
we're not fighting against and wrestling against flesh and blood, but flesh and blood is being used by Satan. Yeah. See, and 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 that's the thing that makes it hard for a lot of people because they see people coming after them or people acting in a certain way. Um, and then that's when you have to really stay focused and know, well, they, they, yes, the people are coming after you and they're acting a certain way or they behave in a certain way and respond in a certain way. But the thing is, is that, but they're getting that influence from that spirit yeah. that's directing them to do what they're doing. Yeah. And and the one thing the one thing about Satan is that he knows all of our weaknesses. He knows everything that will set us ablaze. Yes. He knows everything that will get on our last nerves, mm -hmm. and he knows how to present it to us through people. See that mm -hmm. Satan do use people, yes. and sometimes people are being used by the devil. Sometimes I'm I'm not even sure that they are even aware. A lot of times that the mm -hmm. enemy can use you unaware. You yeah. know. I mean, I, I, I just sit and I observe and I see certain things, you know, happening. And, and then before you know it, and then you, yeah, yeah, you you see a, 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 a projection mm. from people that, that wasn't there before, you know. Yeah. Mm. Somebody, just can, somebody can just whisper in that ear, you know. And before you know it, but see, and the person that's whispering, the enemy's using them to get the other yeah. person off balance. And before you know it, the other person is turning around and looking at somebody else or looking at whatever, whatever, like they don't have good sense or like <laughs> they came from Mars, but it's yeah. the enemy using. Because mm -hmm. he uses people. And yes. then you have to, you have to, you have to kind of. Take a breath and say, oh, no, we're not dealing with people here. You know, we we, we just know it's, it's the enemy. But mm -hmm. you have to really stay focused because you will actually think and come against the people because the enemy operates through familiar spirits. He knows each of us. He yes. knows what would make us tick. He knows what would take us off. And he knows how to present it to you. Mm. But you have to catch yourself. Yeah, because if you don't, you'll respond to what you're seeing. Yes, yes. Glory to God. Yes. Mm. This is reality. This is really reality. You know. Yes. It's reality. Mm-hmm. And yes. that's when you say, "Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Get thee behind me, Satan, the Lord rebuke, rebuke you. you." Yes. Mm. Glory to God. Yes, Pastor. Um, yes. And, you know, Pastor, as you were sharing, sharing that, you know, that very first part, such wisdom there uh, to know that, you know, that the enemy is using flesh and blood to come at us. Amen. And, and it's not that individual, but it is, it is their flesh and blood coming at us, being used by the spirit. Um, mm -hmm. evil spirit and we 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 as pastor said we must must uh be on guard and then like she said i'm satan i rebuke you amen and, and go on about your business because there's something that um that i've been asking the lord for direction on when i see things um and i don't i want to be patient and make sure it is of the lord what i saw and 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 Usually, and and I'm gonna be honest, the Lord at some point reveals, no, you didn't miss what you saw or or what you heard, and to pray for, or if, if it's to uh, um, approach an individual or a situation, Amen. You ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, but I I believe as we pray for discernment, God will give you a spirit of discernment where you'll be able to know, Amen, what you're up against and what you're fighting. And another thing Pastor said, and Ricky and Kevin, you guys been alluding to as well on tonight, is the enemy knows us, Amen. He knows how to, to as Pastor said, hit that right button each and every time. And you think um, you have passed that test, as they will say, and then the enemy, Amen, uh, come with that test all over again, and then you realize, wow, mu much more prayers needed much more reading of scripture, much more being focused is necessary because the enemy is going to come at you each and every time. And then each time, every time is going to come even harder and with more force 
because he wants to destroy us. Amen. So uh, let's be mindful, amen, that we're not fighting against that person. But it is those principalities and that the enemy can use flesh and blood to come against us, as Pastor stated. Uh, Lou, I believe you had your hand up. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. Um, it, it, Kevin talks to me about this all the time as far as uh, some of my buttons and people know, and, and I have this tendency to start talking and about things uh, when I should leave them alone. Um, but today was <laughs> like a perfect example. First thing in the morning, I see a supervisor from maintenance walking by me and he stops. He goes, yeah, I just got an email from a certain person uh, that's on this committee and they want uh, the contractors to hang up a certain flag on the front of the building for beginning of June. And uh, he said that to me. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I said, they, they didn't hang it up last year because we, we complained about it. And then they're going to do it this year. So <laughs> as the day went on, I was like, where's Dan? I want to find out, you know, what we can do about this and, and so on. And, and um, uh, I talked to the president of the union and then uh, I had, we had a prayer group uh, today and I said something to one of the other brothers that were in the meeting or in the prayer group. And, and I'm like, you know, I, my first intention, my first thought is to, well, if they're going to do that, then I want the Puerto Rican flag hung on Hispanic Heritage Month. Or, you know, I, I want the, the Holy Week, I want the Christian flag hung up, you know. And I just get this thing going in my head. And, and, and it's like, and knowing, just listening to this, I can see how the enemy started it off. First thing in the morning, put that thought in my head, and it just, instead of, you know, I rebuke you, Satan, stand behind me in the name of Jesus, but I, I didn't didn't go that way. I went the way of where he pushed my buttons, and I went with it. And, and then finally, when I was in the prayer group, the brother said to me, hey, you know what? That's, that's Satan. That's him wanting this, the, the the divisiveness, the anger, the and you know you got to pray about it. God will handle it. We just have to. We might not like it, but you know we maybe say our piece. But that's it. But don't get, don't let it get. Well, I let it get me worked up. I let it get me going. And and I, I I pray about that a lot because me and Kevin talk about this all the time. And sometimes I, you know, I, I let things get the best of me, and I realize it later i pray about it and, and I, I try not to get into it but that just right now just talking about this I, I i thought about what happened to me today and how you know and you know then a couple other people you know were making fun of me and and, and the other gentleman we were going up to prayer group you know you know bring it blah 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 this that and the other thing and 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 he said it in me when we were in prayer group you know they, you know, he uses people, whether they realize it or not. And it's it just, uh, wow, Lord talks to me. <laughs> he talks to me, man. I tell you, woo. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine, Lou. Uh, thank you for sharing. And I just want to encourage you, man, as you were talking there, uh, I was led back to the scripture of Ephesians 6, verse 11. And it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, amen, to stand against the wiles of the devil, amen. And that's what we have to do. And that's what you had to do in your situation today, where it seems like, you know, everyone was gathering up or coming up against you, laughing, whatever you, but that's the point where we must stand, amen, and stand and not our might, we're standing in the might and the power and the strength of the Lord. Amen. So I uh, thank you for sharing. And we pray that, you know, um, that God will continue to give you the strength to be able to stand and encouragement during those evil times where the enemy comes at you. Uh, yes, Pastor, I believe your hand. When, is, when yeah, I was yeah. hearing, uh, when I was hearing Brother Lou speaking, uh, the thought came to me, people plant seeds. 
Mm-hmm. See, and, and when a seed is planted, it's planted for the purpose, you know, to 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 come against either mm-hmm. you or somebody else. They yeah, plant a seed there, you see. And then before you know it, they're acting on the seed that's been planted in the ear or something they heard or a statement that was made just to set you up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and sometimes you, if you don't watch yourself, so you'll be, be responding. You, well, you look at me stupid, I look at you stupid too. <laughs> mm-hmm. But then you have to catch yourself. No, 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 no. It's not tit for tat or tat for toe. Lucius Satan. <laughs> yes. <he> me? <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I, I you tell just, you. And you just have to let love prevail. Love prevail. Mm-hmm. Because like I was saying on Sunday, we all are working pro- pro- process of progress and process, but we have to allow love. We have to look over each other's faults and yes. see each other's needs. We all yeah. have needs and we all have faults. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, Deacon Kevin? Yeah, I want to say in, in response, and as Pastor had uh, eloquently mentioned, you know, them seeds, and I remember uh, last week when we was heading up for prayer, and it's probably the same guy, and somebody came up and he's like, you know, that guy definitely needs prayer. And this is a person that don't believe in Christ. And he said, you can't be praying for him. And I said, well, you know, I, I pray for you too, not just him. He said, well, you know, you're wasting your breath. You're wasting your breath if you're praying for me because I don't believe. So don't waste your breath. As, you know, and I'm saying, well, no prayer is, is wasted. So as uh, Lou know, we went right upstairs and prayed for him any other person and it wasn't for me it was it was making the enemy mad because the enemy you know sued that same person wanted me to take that that uh seed and then be all mad and they go up for prayer and then praying mad you know yeah. and uh my goal was to make the enemy mad and pray for the very person that didn't believe in Christ and said we were wasting our time and I always try to make it a point because every Wednesday, someone said something, and uh, that's what I was trying to get Lou to understand. Somebody will say something so that you can carry that burden upstairs to the prayer room and not focus on Christ and the prayer, but but just be mad at what the person just just said and what he just mentioned because he, he planned a seed. So my goal was to make the enemy mad. Because uh, I, I, I remembered uh, Pastor saying, you know, uh, the scripture that talks about praying for those um, that, you know, that hate you. When, when people say certain things against you, uh, pray for them. And that makes the enemy mad. And, and you're making yeah. the spiritual wickedness mad. You might not be making the flesh mad, but you're making that spiritual wickedness mad and, and angry. And that's what I, I, I try to do because... Not only that, it blesses me when I turn it around where you try to make me mad, I end up praying for you. And when I'm done, how I feel after knowing someone that that hates me, I'm praying for them. How it makes me feel and what I receive from that by praying for those that ridicule. Uh, We knew it was going to happen. We knew it was going to come up, but now it seems to be getting worse and worse every single week. But as it as the enemy gets darker, you know, we're supposed to shine a light even more through this mess that you know yes. they try to present. Yes. Amen. Can I just say one more thing. I, I don't mean to cut in. The one thing that made me feel good, and Kevin has said this before, that when that happens, uh they, you know, that that shows that God's working because the enemy's trying even harder. I apologize. I didn't mean to cut in. You're, you're fine, Lou. You're fine. Uh, Master, did you have your hand up? Yes. Uh, I was just going to add to what uh, Dick and Anderson has said. He, you, you pray for them. And when you bless them, he, he told you straight out, you know, don't waste your breath. But instead, you bless him. So the blessings that he did not receive from your prayers for him, 
you get them. They, they come back to you and to us because we are praying for the ones that, you know, don't like us or hate us or whatever. Those blessings come back to us. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you, everyone. And I think, yes, uh, Ricky. Um, before that part, when you were speaking about reading on um, how the forces were powerful, um, I'm sorry, just saying how, how powerful they were, but I, I was thinking that God is even more powerful. Yes. And in uh, Psalms 24, where it says that um, there are, Wait a minute. Psalms 24, open up the gate, uh, ancient gates, and let in the king of glory in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. And usually I know it in the King James, the Lord, strong and mighty in battle. But in the Living Bible, it says invincible in battle. Yes, open wide the gate and let the king of glory in. Who is the king of glory? The commander of all of heaven's armies. And so just, yes, we need to know who our enemy is, but we also need to understand whose side we're on and who has our back and who gave us the armor and who equipped us for the battle. So God is over even all of that, but we just have to know that we are fighting a defeated foe, yes, but we have the victory at the same time. And Amen. we will have the victory. Yes, yes. Um, and that's that's a uh, good point as well, Sister Ricky. I tell you, all the comments and everything has been a blessing to me on tonight. I pray that it's been a blessing to everyone as well. Um, and that's uh, uh just very good uh the way to end this part of the the class the class tonight to go into this last part of the scriptures is a man to know that the enemy is a defeated foe and that we are standing in the power of the lord amen and as pastor said amen when we recognize the enemy coming at us satan i rebuke you amen i get under my feet amen and 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 that's the same thing with jesus when he when he was talking to peter amen he recognized even though peter was one of his men, one of his disciples, yet he had to tell Peter, look, Satan is trying to use you right now, amen, but I pray for you, amen, that that when you come up out of this situation, you'll be able to strengthen others, um, your your fellow uh, brothers and sisters in the Lord. So um, it's a battle, and we must understand that we, we're walking in, amen, a good, uh, as they say, we have a good arsenal, amen. Uh, we have what is called a superpower, and what a superpower is, a uh, superpower nation, is that they got all of these different weapons, amen, that other nations are afraid of them because they consider it a superpower because they got weapons that are um, a little bit more powerful than what they might have. And that if you use these weapons, you normally you will win. So how many know that we have a superpower, amen, that, that represent us and that we're backing and we're going into war with amen that's why you know uh, as pastor was sharing a few weeks ago about the spirit of the lord amen uh, on pentecost the power of of, of of christ is within us amen and we know that that luminous power that was able to raise jesus back to life is that same power that resides within each and every one of us and then when we put on that armor amen of the lord we'll be able to stand amen against the wiles of the devil amen uh, Deacon Frank, did you want to say something before I read these final scriptures? Uh, no, no, I just, I just want to be open for uh, okay. the end, that's all. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, let's uh, finish out these scriptures. Uh, Luke 4 and 6 says, And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. Luke 4 and 6. Uh, Luke twenty two thirty one 31 says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat, which I just was re re referencing that scripture. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost and whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, uh, who is the image of God, 
should shine upon them. Uh, second, second Corinthians 4, 3 through 4. And Ephesians 6 and 12, once again, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6, 12. And lastly, 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober. Glory to God. There it is right there. Be sober. Be diligent. Because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Glory to God. And I'm laughing because just as I was reading that, uh, overseer popped in my head and it re he would remind me of his sermon where he took a plant and a flower and, and had, you know, looking around it, looking for those who were weak, amen, for him to attack. And I'm not sure why, but as soon as I started reading that, that's what popped in my head. That God wants us to be vigilant. Overseer was trying to tell us to be vigilant because our adversary, the devil, amen, he's as a born lion. That means he's a phony. He's a fake, amen. But he's walking about, seeking, looking for whom he can attack, whom he can pull away from the kingdom, who he can lead to destruction, who he can lead to internal, eternal damnation. So we must be, yeah. amen, sober, diligent, because the, our adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, walked without seeking whom he may devour. But thought the great uh, scholar Kenneth Woods once again identifies the forces of evil as follows. The principalities, amen, uh, arch, uh, A-R-C-H-E, the first ones, preeminent ones, leaders, the powers, E-X-O-U, S-I-A-S, the authorities, the demons of Satan, and the lower atmosphere who constitute the kingdom in the air. The rulers of darkness of this world, uh, K-O-S-M-O-K-R-A-T-O-R, -O -O Satan and his demons, amen, are the rulers of the darkness of this world. And lastly, the spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places, uh, Two words there, uh, P-N-E-U-M-A-T-I-K-A-T-E-S, P-O-N-E-R-I-A-S. That means Satan and all his demonic forces. Mm -hmm. And that was taken from Ephesians and Colossians, volume one, page 141. Amen. So we're going to uh, pause right there. Uh, next week, we're going to finally, not only say finally, but we're going to get into the whole armor where we're going to um, talk about each one of those pieces of armor that God is asking us to walk in and be strong in. Amen. So once again, I'm looking forward to next week's lesson. And we just thank God for all the input and um, all the uh, the vital instructions and vital information that has been shared to help each one of us continue this walk with Jesus Christ and to know that we are in a battle and we're fighting, amen, principalities and powers of this uh, dark world that we live in today. Amen. Uh, before I give it to Pastor for final and closing remarks, anyone have any thoughts on what, what they got out of the lesson on tonight? Uh, yes, Deacon Kevin. Well, I, I just had something highlighted. Um, and this is only a few paragraphs down from where we started at with the spiritual warfare and it just reminded me where i have highlighted darkness is not knowing these things it is being ignorant of yeah. them you know and that's the true darkness is you chose to be ignorant he chose you know the bible is a gift to america that we have the freedom to read it um you can listen to those around you that god sends to you um, because I count it as that people that are around me, well, you know, Lord, I'm at this job and 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 this is my pulpit. Uh, these are the people that you know he sent me to speak to. But if you chose not to, or you said, you know, don't waste your breath, you know, that's that's you, you know, you chose to be ignorant of the fact that God uh lives and 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 you is you know, you're the reason why. I, you're in that situation uh, when it comes on judgment day. It's not that God didn't bless you, you know, with these gifts, with the people around you, but you chose not to not hear them. Not to hear <laughs> Yes, it's on you. I mean, and, and that's a good way of putting it, you know, ignorance. 
amen, because they chose not to receive um, our Savior Jesus Christ and to acknowledge that he is God's son and he is our way to eternal life. And they're going to, you know, um, at the end, they will know who Jesus is because every knee is going to bow and every uh, hand and, you know, I'm getting it paraphrase and messing it up, but every knee will bow and claim the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, anyone else? Uh, thank you, Deacon Kevin. Uh, yes, Sister Ricky. Um, also, um, I happened to watch part of a movie where a man that uh, fought all the time and, and just was a mess with things uh, had an encounter with the Lord and how God changed his life and um, different ones of his family and stuff were like mocking him. And, you know, we don't believe in that. His dad, I didn't raise you to be like that. And just throughout, just over and over and over again, but he kept his faith and he ended up being able to convey the love that God had for him is the same love that God had for everybody. And even though he was suffering, he, it drew him closer to the Lord and he just explained it in such a way over time that even his dad, uh, cause his dad was like, what are you doing? You know, we're atheists kind of thing. But even after that, he was able to still win over his dad and different ones. So that one that's mocking you just keep loving him with the love of the Lord and letting your light shine and everything. And you never know that love could be so strong that it turned even him. And like you said, there's people that choose to be ignorant of God's love and the opportunities that God has given to him, but you just never know that your walk will could lead him to the Lord eventually. But is it just take them a couple times for you to slip up and retaliate that it'd be like, ah, oh, yeah, see, I told you they wasn't no good. So we always, all of us, all of us, myself included, all of us just always have to be so careful how we respond yeah. to Satan because yeah. he's just waiting to tell for somebody to be like, aha, see, I knew it. Hey, Amen. That's a good point, Sister Ricky. Uh, that is true because that's what the enemy is doing. Amen. And, and they waiting for us for that retaliation to make that one statement. Amen. That I knew you call yourself a Christian. You know, that's what they always would say. But, you know, that's why we got to stand strong. Amen. Um, Lou, did you have your hand up? No. OK. All right. Um, anyone else have anything to say before we. Um, uh, close? I mean, turn it over to pastor. I'm laughing because when y'all did your little thing on my screen, the six little boxes. Reminded me of Hollywood Squares. I'm not sure if y'all remember that game show, but as y'all was doing all that, my mind went there. Hey, Amen. I'm gonna give it to Pastor for closing remarks at this time. Well, we thank the Lord for the lesson and for Pastor Kenny, the teacher, and for each one that's here as on the virtual in the virtual class. I was thinking about the scripture in uh, Second Corinthians chapter ten, where it says, "For <clears throat> though we walk in the flesh." We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And then, and then, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. And I was thinking about the fact, the comment about uh, Sister Ricky had made about God being, you know, the devil is powerful, but God is all powerful. The devil yeah. is mighty, but God is almighty. almighty. So yes. we know the greater one lives in us. And, 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 and we know when the Holy Spirit put us on check <laughs> that yeah. we have to check Check. <laughs> yes. And we have to realize the greater one is in us. Yes. We have to respond to check, check. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. This this is just a distraction now. Check, check. <laughs> yes. So we just thank God, you know, for the fact that 
we are aware, you know, the only thing about the fact when uh, people will say, okay, oh, I, oh I, I told you so, or I thought so, well, you can just let them know the difference between me and you is that I'm forgiven. You don't, you have an ask for forgiveness, but I have yeah. it. So that's the yeah. difference between an unbeliever and a believer. We yeah. are forgiven because we choose to ask for forgiveness, even when we fall yeah. short and miss the mark. Yes. So that's, that's that's the key right there. Mm -hmm. mm. That's all I have. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, awesome way to end the class. I tell you, your wisdom and knowledge is uh, so uh, a blessing to us. And I just thank you for those closing remarks because because uh, that's what it is. You know, uh, we're we're wrestling against the enemy, Amen. And and we win, Amen. Because he's all we. Our God is all powerful, and um. We just win. I, I just my head is just spinning because I'm so um, just grateful for all the knowledge and wisdom that has come across this uh, class on tonight. A lot of nuggets, amen, that we all can take and use to um, to better our lives and without in our fight against the enemy on tonight. Amen. At this time, um, I'm going to share my screen. If you're watching this broadcast on tonight. And you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, uh, we give you the opportunity, amen, to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, amen. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You can repeat these words after me, and the Bible tells us that you will be saved. Even if you find yourself in a backslidden state where you accepted Jesus and you walked away from him and you put you were able to handle things and able to defeat Satan on your own, and you realize that, no, I need to come back to Jesus' protective custody, amen, you can repeat these words after me and you will be saved. Uh, you can repeat these words, dear God, I know I am a sinner in need of a savior. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe your son is Jesus Christ. I believe that he died for my sins and that he was raised back to life. I want to accept him as my Lord and the Lord of my life. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you just repeated those words after me, the Bible tells us that you are saved. We welcome you into the kingdom of God. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. And we on the broadcast tonight are rejoicing as well for you accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You can put some information in the chat if you would like more information on this new walk with the Lord. Or you can go to our webpage, rcfchurch.org, rcfchurch.org, and you can send us an email. And we'd be glad to get you out some information on this new walk with yeah. Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, our upcoming events uh, this week, um, there's not a lot of them this week, um, but uh, tomorrow, every Thursday, at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. on WTMRRadio.com and 800 a.m. radio. Uh, it's time of restoration radio broadcast. Our pastor is in a series called uh, Speak Life. Uh, part 13 will be available tomorrow um, live on WTMRRadio.com and 800 radio. Also at 10 a.m. and um, uh, 10 a.m. on our rcfchurch.org, Apple Podcasts, Amen. Speak Life Part 13 will be available as well. But if you would like to catch it live, you can catch it at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. on WTMRRadio.com, 800 a.m. radio. Uh, once again, she's talking Speak Life. Um, it's been an awesome series so far. Um, if you want to learn how and what, you, what we should be speaking, I challenge you and encourage you to, to tune in to those classes, Speak Life, and you will be blessed and you will um, understand how and what our tongue can do amen there's death and life in the power of our tongues and we must learn how to speak life and not death amen uh also this sunday is uh communion sunday this is the first sunday of the month we will be receiving communion right after uh service uh so um all those members and uh, people that would like to join us this sunday after first at first service i guess one day we have two services but after Sunday morning service, we will be having a man communion. Amen. If you would like to be a blessing to restoration, the Bible tells us, amen, every man according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver, Second Corinthians 9, 7. We hear a restoration. Uh, this is good soul. We don't waste your money. We use your money to help benefit the kingdom of God. 
Um, no Jets, no Bentleys, no custom suits and custom teeth and rings. It's all your money goes towards supporting the kingdom of God. If you would like to be a blessing to restoration, you can go, go to our cash app page, um, dollar symbol RCF Church SJ, dollar symbol RCF Church SJ. You can donate that way. You also can go to our webpage, rcfchurch.org, rcfchurch.org, and you can click on our giving page and you can give that way as well. Once again, um, God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, if you were blessed through these messages, not just on Wednesday night Bible study, but even on Sunday mornings, amen, um, any of the, the, the broadcasts that you get an opportunity to listen to, if you're blessed, you like to contribute to the work of the kingdom, you can. And, and those options available to you. Amen. Also, if you would like more information about our church, you can visit us at rcfchurch.org, rcfchurch.org. All the information, our bylaws, doctrine, what we believe, our pastor, uh, pastor's bio, um, all the information, um, history of restoration is all right there found on rcfchurch.org. Also, under the sermons page, you can get all the previous uh uh, time of Restoration radio broadcast as well. Also for our um, uh, social media people, YouTube and Facebook, uh, each Sunday uh, we post our Sunday morning service uh, on YouTube after the service. That can be found on RCF Church SJ, RCF Church SJ. Also our Wednesday night Bible study is also posted there after Bible study on YouTube, RCF Church SJ. Facebook, uh, we're, we're, uh, our name is RCFCSJ, RCFCSJ. Now, Facebook is uh, where we uh, do a lot of our um, weekly programming, our, uh, streaming. We're streaming this Bible study live tonight. Also, we stream each Sunday morning service live. And then also after the service, we post a sermon clip of the whole, just the message. But also, if you want the full service, uh, you can view that as well, all found on our Facebook page. But if you would like to hear the message, uh, that message from each service is posted on both the RCF Church SJ for YouTube, RCF S S SJ for Facebook. And lastly, if you would like to visit us in person, you can go to 4 403 Andrews Road, Sickleville, New Jersey, 08081. 403 Andrews Road, Sickleville, New Jersey, 08081. So if you're in the surrounding areas and you would like to come visit us, those are the directions, um, address to visit us, all the information, how and what we're all about, all posted on our web pages. Amen. So those are the announcements for tonight. Uh, we look forward, if you can, visit us in person to visit us in person. At this time, I asked uh, Deacon Frank Tall if he would close this out in prayer. If he could now close us out in prayer. Uh, uh, thank you, Elder Kenny. Uh, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you. I thank you for the privilege of, of being part of this Bible study. I thank you for the privilege of being put a part of a fellowship. Heavenly Father, I thank you right now for the leadership and for Restoration Christian Fellowship Church. And Father, for the words that, that come out from you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege of letting me see how you have blessed us as a people, as a, as a, as a nation, as a people. I thank you how you blessed us and protected us. You've given us men and women of, of, of courage and men and women of wisdom and of skill to know how to keep us and protect us in the word of God and as, as, as a people uh, for protection that the word of God can go forth freely. I saw it firsthand for myself over the last uh, week or so, how you've given us great men of, great men of wisdom and stature and and skill how to protect us as a nation as the people so the word of god could go forth uh, without hindrance father and i pray that we would continue to be that people that still honor god in our civilian life in our military life and in all aspects of our life we will honor you and not turn away from the word of god father again i thank you for all these things that you've done for us father i thank you for the, we give us the word in ephesians how to protect us from using the arm the armor of god which you've given us to protect ourselves and to bless others father and how to walk in your blessing Father, I thank you that you've given us your spirit that we can walk in, in, in your forgiveness and in power, but in the power of your forgiveness and, and love and with, with and a sound mind to, to love those, even those that don't even love us back, as, as Dick and Kevin was sharing, as his friend was sharing about the man that they said he did wasn't do with God. But nevertheless, we know that we are in this battle. Yes, no one yes. is exempt. No person in this world is exempt. So, Father, again, I thank you that you have given us your spirit 
and giving us your love that we can love those that even don't that, that even though they hate us, we can still love them. Father, again, I thank you. I lift up the nation of Israel right now, Father. I lift up that that, that small nation of bigger than the state of New Jersey, that for their protection, and Father, that you will continue to watch over and protect them for just their battle for the survival of their very lives. Father, let us as a nation, as a people, as a church, never let us never turn away from being on Israel's side because you said that's the apple of your eye. You love them. Your name is in Jerusalem. Your name is there. So let us let us be mindful that no matter what the world says, no matter what the people, the pundits say, the news media those that that's, that's speaking for the powers of darkness, whether they realize it or not, Father, we will be on the side of Israel because, God, what you love is what we love. What you hate is what we hate. So, Father, again, I thank you for all these things. And let us always be a people that always, always be on the, the things that you love and do the things that you say us to do because you say if you love me, you'll do what I say. You'll do what I, what, I, what I command you to do. And your command is not hard. It's not grievous because you do it out of love because you gave yourself for us. You shed your blood for me, for us, for all of us. So we can have life here and also have life eternal. So, Father, again, I thank you for this word tonight. I thank you again as we delve into the word of Ephesians for the armor, the protection that you've given us so we can deal in this world, this fallen world that we live in tonight, that we live in this day. Yet, nevertheless, we can live in peace and harmony and love and joy and in and, and soundness of mind as we go through this, this, this world, as we go, go forth tonight. Father, I thank you for all these things, the blessed restoration on the staff and everybody involved with that. And all, this, all the churches that name the name of Christ, they really, truly believe yeah. the word of God from from the Genesis to Revelation, they believe that God's word is inspired. It is those men that wrote those words. Yeah, men wrote those words, but they were they were moved by the power of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost that took them by the hand like a father would take a son and write those words, to pen those words that we read today with power that is power in those words. Those words of spirit, Father, that come from heaven. So, Father, again, I thank you for all these things, everything we have learned and continue to learn and believe in you, and we'll be forever, ever, forever so grateful. I thank you for all this in Jesus' name. I thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you for that beautiful prayer, uh, Deacon Tall. Uh, once again, I thank everyone for joining and all the input that was given on tonight. It has been a blessing. Our benediction reads, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining. Please have a blessed night and we look forward to seeing you at another service. Take care. God bless.